the many years of diving deep into different trading styles, different trading courses, and reading quite literally hundreds of different books about trading business and human psychology, I've come to the conclusion that what you're about to hear in this video is literally the most real straight to the point trading psychology tip you're going to hear on the internet. You probably know by now that at least 80% of retail traders are unprofitable. And you know what? Books like Market Wizards say the statistic is much higher than that. So how is it possible that the majority of retail traders are, are unprofitable in the game? So when we boil down what is trading, they're either really bad at strategy, which is only 10% of the game. They're either really bad at risk management, which is only 10% of the game, but it's most likely that retail traders and new traders, and to be fair, most traders and most human beings are just very bad at mastering their psychology. The deeper you go into trading, the more you realize that that exact statement is true. There is no one magical strategy, no one magical time frame, no one magical trading indicator that will make you consistently profitable over time if you haven't mastered trading psychology. But here's the big problem. The human mind is described as a monkey mind, especially in today's society where everyone is being geared and wired to wanting quick, cheap dopamine from scrolling on TikTok and getting instant gratification very quickly. That approach will not make you a consistently profitable trader. Even if you try to become a, you know, a great day trader and a scalper, if you do not manage your emotions, no matter what your trading style is, you're going to be unprofitable because inevitably, no matter how good your trading win rate is, you're going to be in drawdown in trades. And if you're not able to manage your risk to the downside and control your emotions throughout the seasons, throughout the times of year, when you drink a cup of coffee and you're feeling caffeinated, if you can't control your inner state, then your performance, even with a very high win rate trade strategy, is still going to be unprofitable. And you don't have to take my word for it. Just read books like Trading in the Zone, which to be fair, is a very beginner friendly entry level trading psychology book. In this video, I want to give you something that goes way beyond trading in the zone. I actually want to give you guys an edge. But here's the reason why I'm willing to share this information for free on YouTube, even though it's taken me quite literally multiple six figures in losses to learn this advice. It's because trading psychology is so difficult to master. Like the majority of people watching this, if you can actually go through this process and actually gain good control over your trading psychology over the long run, then quite literally you have earned it because it's so difficult. I'm happy to share this away because most people just won't master this. Most people won't even have the attention span in today's society to stay consistent with what I'm about to say. Step number one is you have to develop self-awareness. You have to know what state of consciousness you are in at different points of the day, at different times of the year, and at different phases in your life. There's several good books that talk about different states of human consciousness. To put some on your radar right now, you can read Levels of Energy by Frederick Dodson. You can read Power Versus Force by Dr. Hawkins. Step number one is you need to accurately be able to describe your current level of consciousness and you have to take a holistic view of all aspects of your life. There's no way you're going to be a fantastic top level trader if you're taking on lots of other stress in other areas of your life that are dragging down your emotions. For example, you go through a breakup and now you're, you know, you're like you're feeling uh, grief, despair, maybe even anger, if, like if your girlfriend or whatever cheated on you. And that as a result will really pull down your levels of consciousness into some of these lower vibrations down here, such as anger, desire, fear, grief. Overall, the majority of traders and the majority of society as a whole is calibrated at around the state of 175, which is pride to the state of courage. And if you think about big cities like London, New York, they're very materialistic, right? That's a state of pride. It means your, your ability to feel happy and to feel pleasure is dependent on something else. So it's dependent on you know, needing to demand a high paying job or a fancy car or a Rolex or whatever it is. That puts you in a state of pride, which is actually in the, in the framework of levels of energy and consciousness, that's actually quite a low energetic state. So I have found that the most successful traders are always very cool, calm and collected. They're not too focused on materialistic outcomes unless if they're selling a course. Uh, let's be honest, man. Yeah, like if they're setting a course, then they're going to be like pulling you down into these states of pride and desire. And come on, guys, you want the Lamborghini? Buy my course. Whereas some of the best traders who are actually traders, they got nothing to sell you. They're just traders. And you, these guys are usually very introverted. They're not on the Internet. And you probably find them in like some low key discord community or some like place where you can actually see their PL. From my research, some of these best traders are always very cool, calm and collected, which puts them in a state of acceptance, willingness and neutrality for the most part. Why is that important? You need to accept the fact that as a human, you're, you're very delicate. 
You're very delicate. And if you don't believe me, read this book. It's called The Art of Thinking Clearly. This book literally lays out like, I think, 50, 60 plus fallacies that the human brain goes into. So let me just, I'm going to literally randomly pick a page right now and let's run through it. All right, so I've literally pulled it up onto a random page and I'm going to apply this fallacy here to your trading. So this fallacy here is known as the endowment effect, which means don't cling on to things. We consider things to be more valuable the moment we own them. In other words, if we are selling something, we charge more for it than what we would ourselves be willing to spend on it. What does that mean? The endowment effect means as soon as you buy something, as soon as you buy a stock, as soon as you buy Bitcoin, you suddenly think Bitcoin is more valuable than what someone else in the market might be willing to buy it from you for. So once you start reading psychology books like this, you really start to develop an awareness of how delicate the human mind is. And as a result, you understand that being a human is very tough and your best option is, is to pick a trading system that you have backtested and you just accept that you're going to blindly follow this trading system, taking your emotions out of the process, meaning no matter how you're feeling on the day, if you're feeling euphoria, anxiety, uh, depression in, in like the Bitcoin bear market, no matter how you're feeling, you need to blindly accept and stick to a specific trading system. So that's me wrapping up step number one, develop the self-awareness of where your current level of consciousness is. And now let's tie this into a really super practical example. This is where what I'm about to share with you gets mad high level and people like literally gatekeep this information behind paid communities. Okay. There was this genius guy. Like when I say genius, like what he did was actually revolutionary and he taught people how to read other people's minds and he taught people how to develop high levels of intuition to the point where you could literally, this is going to sound like a Dr. Strange movie, but you could literally astral project out of your body. How is that possible? Well, just go read his book. This book is like literally $10, um, $10 or whatever on Amazon. So it's super cheap. It's the entry level uh, way to understanding how his um, system works. But essentially, in a nutshell, this is how it works. The human brain has different states of vibration, right? You've probably heard the famous state from uh, Nikola Tesla. Uh, if you want to understand the universe, you have to think in energy, frequency, and vibration. So here we're talking about the different frequencies that the human mind which is arguably the most powerful thing of the universe, these are some of the most important states that the human mind goes into. For example, when you're asleep, you enter an altered state of reality. You know, if, whether you're religious and you believe in like Hinduism and Sanskrit, some people believe that when you're asleep, you enter the astral realm or the dream realm. Some people who are more into like quantum physics and reality transurfing and that school of thought, they believe that when you're in delta state and you're sleeping, you're exploring alternative realities that are near to you on a quantum infinite grid. You're probably thinking right now, what the F does this have to do with trading? My guy, if you have that mentality, you're probably not going to make it in this game because everything is connected. Everything is connected. Trading is a zero sum game and it's an intellectual game. So if you want to be good at this game, you have to master your mind. These are some of the most core states of brain. Beta state is known as the awakened state. So when you just drink a coffee and you're like in fight or flight, you're in an alert response, that's when you're in beta state. And if, we, if I tie this back to here, when you're in that fight or flight alert response, for the most part, you're actually going to be pulled down into some of these third dimension states here, like pride, anger, desire. You know, a lot of people refer to coffee as liquid motivation. That's why a lot of athletes and uh, bodybuilders, they take caffeine and pre-workouts before they exercise because they want to put themselves into a strong state of beta where they're pumped up and ready to exercise. Whereas when you want to develop strong levels of intuition and being able to have like a stronger gut feeling over the direction of a particular price asset and an instrument, you need to learn how to consistently put yourself into alpha and theta state. And that's exactly what the Silver Ultramind system has taught people how to do, how they can literally put themselves into a deeper state of consciousness so they can read the minds of other people. This is going to sound crazy, but the human mind is like an antenna. There's literally energetic frequencies that are emitting past the human body into your surrounding environment. Just like how a phone can tune into the frequency of Wi-Fi or maybe a better example is a walkie-talkie. If we actually believe that the human mind is the, one of the most powerful devices in the, in the universe, then surely it's more powerful than a walkie-talkie. So whether you believe that or not at this point in time, just put this on your like to-do list, go do some research into this and you'll find the topic very interesting as you dive into it. So as a trader, when you're trading and when you're approaching the decision-making process as an investor, because sometimes, you know, if you're holding a swing trade for a couple of months or a couple of years, you need to, uh, 
you need to put yourself into a controlled state when you're entering the process of managing that trade because obviously you're not going to be thinking about you know your long-term bitcoin investment every single day of every single year but there'll be certain moments in time when you sit down at your desk you're looking at trading view you're analyzing the market and then you're making the decision if you should buy it or if you should sell the asset and when you're making that decision you should put yourself into an altered state of consciousness such as alpha state and theta state how do you do this right now we're going to talk about biohacking and topics like this so alpha state you can put yourself in alpha state by drinking green tea Green tea contains this amino acid called L-theanine. L-theanine is a very small amino acid. It can pass through the blood-brain barrier. Essentially, it releases this, um, I think it's like a hormone or chemical in the brain called GABA, which relaxes you and it puts you into a deep state of relaxation. But the caffeine in green tea keeps you alert. So this is so it basically puts you in between beta and theta. As a result, you're calibrated at around alpha frequency. There are other devices that you can use, like pulse electromagnetic field devices, which is literally what I'm sat on right now. On my trading chair, I have this. I'm, I'm going to show you it properly. This device right here. I've got this little remote here, and I literally adjust the settings on the device here. What these devices do is they basically energetically, through uh, alternating currents, calibrate your body's frequency to a certain state. PMF devices are kind of pricey. The one I have here is actually fairly cost efficient. It's like $500, um, but they get way more expensive than this. There's like Beamer devices and then there's um, medically grade devices that NFL athletes and like high performing athletes use PMF devices to uh, promote healing in their body and promote relaxation before games. Being a good trader and being an athlete, there's lots of similarities between all of this. Having good intuition is going to improve your decision making under high stress moments. All right, guys, I got way more to go through in this video, but that piece of advice there alone is very high level, right? And the fact is, I just told you guys major market alpha. <laughs> like literally, I'm telling you market alpha right here, yeah? All I ask is you give the video a thumbs up. I'm not going to even ask you to subscribe. Just check out some of my other content. And if you like what you see, then consider subscribing. So let's wrap this up. When you're in a high stress situation, such as trading or investing or managing money, especially when you're in drawdown, especially when you're at a loss, you need to put yourself into a relaxed state before you make any decision. In my opinion, this is going to, you know, some people like are going to disagree with this, but I actually think you should avoid coffee and highly stimulating things, uh, unless if it's green tea, um, because green tea and matcha, they have L-theanine, as I said, which actually relaxes you. I know some people, they will have, um, they will have coffee just because they love their morning coffee when they're doing their morning, like uh, they're doing their morning TA and just analyzing the market. And that's fine, right? But when you're actually making the decisions in the moment and you have active trades that you're managing, you want to put yourself into a more relaxed state. So then you could actually consider pulling down the vibration of the coffee that's making you really alert. And you could neutralize that with another compound like um, chamomile tea, something that's more relaxing and calms you down. Another thing which is really important, this is like so bloody important, institutional traders are fully aware of, and it's the oxygen in the room that you're taking the trades in, right? There's a reason why casino owners know to pump oxygen into the casino house, right? And it's because it improves people's risk appetite. As you breathe more oxygen, it puts you into a state of beta, fight or flight, you know, like you get a lot of courage, liquid motivation, and then you're just taking stupid trades. You become a gambler, okay? So instead, you want to be more relaxed and calm. How can you do this with oxygen? You can do breath work. You can do uh, Wim Hof breathing before you uh, take trades. You should have reminders on your phone that remind you to take um, deep breaths, like the Apple Watch it literally tells you to breathe every now and then. Just open the, uh, open the window in your room, get some fresh air. What I like to do is I light an incense stick in this room when I trade because it makes me more mindful of my breath. Alternatively, what I sometimes also do is I, um, I like this thing. It's called um, San, uh, Polo Santos wood. They say it's like supposed to raise your vibration and improve your mood as well. I don't know about that, but it smells great. And I just light it on a candle like this when I trade. And it's part of a ritual. And uh, this is concept known as neuro linguistic programming, NLP, where you alter different states of your environment when you want to put yourself into the zone. So you do this by um, altering your senses. So for example, I turn this PMF device on, which is changing touch, is changing the way my body feels. I light a candle or an incense stick, which adds smell into the room. I actually change the lighting in this room. So this entire room that I'm in now is controlled by Philips Hue lighting. So for example, if I push this button, you can see like the room changes color. So I can literally just put myself into the zone when I trade by putting the room at a certain color. 
And you can do different tricks like this. Uh, I also play uh, binaural beats when I'm trading. Uh, I use Brain FM, which is this. It's like really cheap. I think it costs like 10 pounds for the entire year, but it's a uh, research backed music and there's different settings. You can put set, you can put it onto like, um, like an ADHD setting, which really like calibrates your brain to a certain frequency of alpha state that calms you down. You could also just go on YouTube and search alpha beats which will directly help calibrate your brain into a state of alpha. And these are all techniques that um, Jose Silva talks about in the Silver Mind Control System. Okay, so what we're going to move on to next is where this topic really goes deep into human psychology, right? So we're going to move away from all the technical analysis, momentum analysis, and we're going to dive super deep into understanding different principles that govern the universe and govern, therefore, the human body and the human mind. I want to talk about this concept known as the seven hermetic principles. This comes from a very famous book called the Kabbalion. This is considered a very ancient text in scripture, uh, which the ancient Egyptians believed in. And it talks about there being seven laws in the universe. So let me just zoom into this one image over here, because I know you can't see that one because I'm covering it. Uh, but essentially, there's these seven principles. The principle of correspondence, the principle of vibration, the principle of polarity, the principle of rhythm, the principle of cause and effect, and the principle of gender. And in the middle of all of this, there is the most important one, the principle of mentalism. So I'm just going to focus on the most important one right now. And you should definitely go away. If you're serious about trading and you want to master your mind, you need to read texts like the Kabbalion. Very small book as well. It will take you like a day to read it. The principle of mentalism basically means that your mind is the most powerful thing in the universe and everything in our reality is essentially the byproduct of the imagination. No matter what your religious point of view is, this is just what the Kabbalion says, so it's worth just listening to it anyways. The Kabbalion basically says that we all live in the imagination of the all. The all, you know, you could rechange the word the all with God or the creator or the universe or the sun. Uh, or whatever you want to call it, it basically describes that we're living in the imagination of someone else. Therefore, whatever you think of, you can manifest it into real life. Principle number one, the all is mind, the universe is mental. The beautiful thing about trading is it's literally a mental game. It's a zero-sum intellectual mental game. Unlike sports where the physical, uh, your physical uh, body matters, trading is literally just to do with your mind. You can sit at your keyboard, you could be overweight, you could be skinny, you could be anorexic, you could be a primordial dwarf, you could be a giant, like it doesn't matter. As long as your brain is working and you can turn up at your desk and you can control your brain states, which we've already spoken about, and you have the self-awareness to understand your emotions and control your monkey mind, then the game is purely just mental. As the Kabbalion says, there's a very popular quote in the Bible as well. And lots of lots of different religious texts. Like I've read several different religious scriptures because I, I like to have a holistic view of everything. And um, that's just my personal perspective. Like I've literally read most of the texts now. And the Bible literally says, if you think of something enough with enough vibration, with enough intention in your heart, it will become that. And this is the concept of the law of attraction. The reason why the law of attraction is important when it comes to trading is because it's the same thing. When you're a trader, you're buying something now with the prospects of selling it for a profit in the future. When you're leveraging the law of attraction through manifestation and visualization techniques, you're basically doing the same thing. You're doing something right now in this point in time, in the current present moment to alter and to draw upon you a future outcome that you'd like to see. And there's loads of successful traders, like um, some of you guys who are into crypto, you probably know about Carl from the moon. He always talks about the law of attraction and how a couple of years ago he was a, uh, a guy working in a grocery store. And now he's like, a I don't even know what his net worth is, but he might be a billionaire from cryptocurrency and investing in this space. He attributes a lot of his success to the law of attraction. Some of you guys might also know about Iman Gadzi, who's a very successful entrepreneur. He, like, especially if you buy into some of his high level programs and courses, he talks a lot about mindset and manifesting and reading books like Reality Transurfing to bend reality to achieve what you would like to achieve. This is really high level stuff. Some of you may believe in this, some of you may not believe in this, but it's one of those topics, the more you look into it and the more you dive deeper into human psychology and ancient esoteric spiritual texts, the more you realize that you can actually surrender your psychology to some of these esoteric concepts. And that's the most important thing I want to get across in this part of the video. It's about surrendering. So as soon as you can just say, I surrender to a higher power, a higher law, a higher power of vibration, or I surrender to the stars, I surrender to a specific religious point of view, I pray for a specific outcome, 
you surrender. You then realize that you as a human being, you're insignificant. So all of these random thoughts going on in your mind, all of these doubts you have about that trade or that you're in drawdown and you're wondering if you were correct or if you were wrong, you can then surrender all of these doubts, fears and low vibrational states that you do not want to be in because you want to be in a higher state of alpha and theta so you have more intuition. All you're basically doing is you're telling your mind to shut the F up. You're telling all of these like monkey mind, low vibrational thoughts that have maybe been planted into you by society, by the media, by the education system, or by past traumas and experiences that have made you live in a state of fear. You can now get rid of them, controlling your emotions, raising your vibration into a state of acceptance, willingness, neutrality. And as a result, you're putting yourself into a state of higher intuition which as a result makes you a better trader because you're more relaxed this my friend is actually the most important thing i want to get across in this video but i've had to explain all of these previous concepts first before i have gotten on to this point whether you believe in numerology or you believe in financial astrology or you believe in just praying to god after every single trade you place the fact is that you're surrendering to a higher power makes you a better trader because you can master your psychology better because you relax more having some sort of faith in something is extremely important especially when you're trying to stick to something in the long run there's a reason why marriages are way more likely to succeed in a religious setting why do you think people get married in a church or traditionally people would get married in a church when society was more religious especially in the western world it's because the marriage was more likely to succeed the marriage is a long term commitment when you enter any long term commitment whether it's to hold bitcoin through the entire bitcoin cycle or to value invest into a long term commitment or whatever you're going to go through different states of emotion so you need to surrender to a higher power that will carry you and give you faith through the low times they say you can always dictate the strength of a man by how low he's been because the pendulum of life is always going to swing it's always going to swing either way and that's called the uh, the law of polarity in the hormetic principles over here right the the law of polarity which is law four so if you can't master these low states you will never get to experience the pendulum swing back the other way if you if you panic or if you enter capitulation or if you enter depression in the bear market you're never going to get to experience the euphoria and the thrill and the excitement of the bull market this is why there's lots of concepts like only invest what you're willing to lose because when you place this is another high level concept when you place little importance on your investing right you're, you're relaxed you don't give a f you, you know you, you, there's no importance placed upon it you can allow the pendulum to swing more freely you know books like reality transurfing basically teach you all of these mental models so that you can better master your psychology so you can perform better as an entrepreneur as a trader as an athlete or, or in any high stress situation there's different ways to surrender some people look at financial astrology like charts like this and there's very profitable trading systems built around that some people look at numerology. So I often analyze numerology in some of my trading videos because it's very simple. It's just a very simple, easy way to reduce importance. And that's the whole purpose of it. It's all to do with trading psychology. Some people look to religion and they pray to their creator and that's what gives them comfort and peace during the difficult times. Okay, guys, so let's wrap the video up. Just remember, guys, trading psychology is 80% of the game. If you want to be a long-term, consistently profitable trader, not just someone who gets lucky in certain market conditions, you want to have longevity in this game. Remember, it's a zero-sum game, right? You're competing against other people. There are people out there who are willing to go so deep into the topic of trading psychology when you spend 90%, 100% of your time just focusing on trading strategy or risk management, and you're missing out this whole extra part of the game. So as a key takeaway from this video, I strongly encourage you guys to write down your own trading process that incorporates a key aspect of it, which is trading psychology. How do you make sure that you're in the right psychological state when you're approaching the markets? This is how I do it personally. I've come up with the trading drip MTS methodology. And if you watch the videos on this YouTube channel, you see me practically applying this system to a range of different cryptocurrency swing trades. So here's my trading system. I've kind of governed this by the laws of nature, motion, time, and space. So I start off by looking at the price action using order flow techniques, footprint, volume profile, and I'm looking at more sophisticated volume-based techniques. And that's how I analyze motion, which is basically price action. Then I look to time my entry using momentum indicators. And the final thing I look at is space. Space for me is all about managing the subconscious aspects behind the trading process 
basically trading psychology. So I look at different things that allow me to surrender to a higher power. For example, numerology. It's like a really quick, easy way. Look at the life path number of a particular cryptocurrency. You have to believe in the system as well. Like you can't just do it for the sake of it. Like I genuinely do believe in numerology because I like literally, I use numerology in all aspects of my life. Like I, I run a separate business outside of trading. Probably shouldn't say this, but I literally look at the life path number of the people that I hire before I hire them because it's been so dead accurate. The top performing people in my team, they all have a life path eight characteristic or they're a life path four. So they're very hardworking. Whenever I've hired someone with comic debt, they, they haven't been a top performing person in my team. So for me, in my reality, numerology is a good way to surrender to a higher power. Or some of you might have a specific deity that you like um, praying to or, or doing mantras or manifestation or visualization techniques or whatever it is, right? You just need to surrender to a higher power. And that's what I do in space. And if you would like to learn a little bit more about numerology and financial astrology and my trading drip MTS methodology, which is the process that I personally follow, then check out this um, these videos here at the top of my YouTube channel that I pinned up here and consider subscribing as I'd love to have you in our growing community. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.